We're going to go ahead and get started. It looks like we've been joined by someone else. Thank you for joining us. This is Canvas Intermediate. Uh, the agenda for today, I'm just going to repeat it. It's uh, I'm going to show you how to create a or change the image here. This is the course card. I'm already sharing my screen. Um, then I'll show you how to create a group assignment. Then I'll show you how to moderate a quiz. Then from there, it'll be giving a student a different window of opportunity for a quiz or an assignment. And then the last part of this will be on Turnitin. Um, in this demonstration, I'll be showing both the student view and the teacher view. So I'll be switching between browsers because some of the functionality, uh, I just need to have an actual student account, which I do have. So um, yeah, with that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna access the course, it's this one here. It is Test 102 Canvas Demo. And I already have some content in here. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by changing the graphic for that course card. So I'm gonna click on Settings. Now this is something that's available to you as a teacher. And for the image, there's this first option here called image for the course under the course details. And I just click choose image. If you already had a graphic or an image you'd like to use, you could just upload it here, but I don't have an image. So I'm gonna click on Unsplash. Unsplash is a repository of images that photographers have uploaded and shared freely. So I'm just gonna search for books. And then there is several images that come up of books. And when I click on one of these, I get to see the name of the photographer that took the image. I like this one, so I'm gonna just click that one. And that has now become the image for my course card. So now when I click on dashboard, here is my course. There's that image I just chose. And then it's got uh, this red tint because Canvas gives every course card a tint. And if I wanted to change that to be a different color, I could just, from these three dots here, I get this option and then I could just apply that different tint. Now it's purple, or if I wanna make it this green, I click on the green and then I apply. And that's how you change the image. Um, so yeah, that's the first thing I want on the agenda and it's very easy, simple to do. It makes it easier to identify uh, specific courses, especially if you have multiple courses. So now I'm going to click into the course, and I'm going to now show you how to create a group assignment. So here I've got different assignments that I've already created. I'm going to go ahead and click on assignments here. So I'm going to create this one called sample group assignment. Uh, this is Canvas Intermediate, so it, uh, you know, there's a presumption that you already know how to create uh, assignments. Uh, please work in your assigned groups. So I won't get into too much detail, but I'm going to leave all of these settings default. And then I'm going to go straight to the group assignment, and I'm going to check off this is a group assignment. So here, I'm, as soon as I click on it, I'm prompted to create a group set name. So for the group set name, I'm gonna call this Canvas 102 Spring 2020 Group Work. The reason for a specific name, I'll show you uh, when I click over to the student view, um, it just makes it easier to track. So I'm not going to allow self sign up. The reason for this is I want Canvas to create the groups and assign the groups automatically. Uh, if I need to change that, I can do that later and I'll show you how to do that. So for group structure, so I'm gonna skip this self sign up option, but I will check off for the group structure. I'm gonna tell Canvas that I want two groups. In this test course, I have uh, three students, three test accounts that I've enrolled in it. So I wanna do two groups. Now for leadership, I'm just gonna let Canvas automatically uh, pick it. So now I'm gonna click Save, and once I click Save, I get this new item here, that's fine, and then I have this new prompt, assign grades to each student individually. I do not wanna do that. 
this is a group assignment, everyone's going to get the same grade. So here for the due date, I'm now going to just click on Friday the 17th, available starting today, and then I'm going to click until 19th, and I'm going to just click save and publish. So now while that's publishing, you'll excuse me, I'm going to get some water. Okay, so now my assignment is published. I think I need to publish my course. Yep, I do. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my other browser where this, I already have my student account preloaded. So it's logged in and I'm gonna to come to assignments. But before I click on the sample assignment, I want to draw your attention. This is in the student account. On the Canvas navigations, there is this groups menu item. And when I click on it, I see all the groups that this student is a member of. So there's this generic name, assignment one, group two, then this generic assignment two, group B. And here's the group that I just created. This is why I give it as specific and as detailed a name as I can because this is very helpful for the students to know this is their group. So now I'm gonna click on it just to show you what it looks like. And here there is basically a little mini version of Canvas. And here they could collaborate, collaborate, communicate, and do different things um, that would help them with their group work. So now returning to the course, I'm gonna click on Canvas 102. I'm going to go to assignments and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to submit whoop, I'm going to submit this sample group assignment work because I'm going to show you what it looks like once the student has submitted the work. So I'm going to click submit assignment and then here there's this file upload. This is common. What is new is this orange ex, orange box with a white exclamation point. It says keep in mind this submission will count for everyone in your Canvas 102 Spring 2020 group work group. So I'm going to click choose file and I'm going to upload the work here. Now I'm going to click submit assignment. And then here's the group submission. Down at the bottom is the submission details. Now I'm going to switch over to my other browser And when I click on assignments, the sample assignment one, oh, sorry, sample group assignment. Here we see zero out of one submissions graded. So if you're wondering, well, how do I know which individuals are in which group? Um, you could see that by clicking on people, which is the roster area of the course. And here under people, there is everyone in the course. These are my test accounts. And then here is the groups. When I click on the groups, I will see the two distinct groups and who is a member of which group. Here, Herbert Testo 3, which is the one that did the submission, he only had, he was assigned in one group, but if I wanted to put Herbert Testo 3, or Herbert Testo 2, I could manually do that. And, since I already did the submission, I get this notice. Warning, you are about to adjust this group's membership. This will change, this change will affect existing group submissions, annotations, and comments, and result in data loss for both this group. So let me cancel this, because I already did the submission as Herbert Testo 3. So let me, uh, let me go ahead, and I'm going to go ahead and do this. Normally, I would not recommend changing the groups after the fact. I'm going to change existing group, because that sort of notification will pop up. And I'm going to do a new submission as Herbert. So I'm reloading this page. I'm going to resubmit the assignment. OK. 
Okay, now we'll get an updated date and timestamp for the submission, 1014. Now I'm going to come back to the Canvas course. And when I go to Grades to see the submission, we'll see that Herbert Testo 3 and Herbert Testo 2 have done the submission because since this was built as a group assignment, Herbert Testo 3's submission counts as, as for everyone in the group. So now I'm going to go into the speed grader. I can't do anything right today. Speed grader. And I'm going to go ahead and give the assessment here. I'm going to give it 7 out of 10 points. I don't know why it's taking so long to load. Great work team. All right. So now I've given the grade of seven points out of 10. This should have already loaded. I don't know what's going on with it. But when I click, when I go back to the grade book, Herbert Testo 3 and Herbert Testo 2 both get seven out of 10 points because it was a group assignment built with points being applied to all the students. So that's how you create a uh, group assignment. So now I'm going to show you how to moderate a quiz. So now I'm going to go back here to quizzes. We're going to take a look at sample quiz one. So here is our quiz description. Please answer the following questions. You have 15 minutes. This quiz is built with a time limit of 15 minutes. And it's available to everyone. So moderate quiz allows you as the teacher to give one or more than one specific students more time per quiz attempt. It only works for quizzes and this is as an example. If you have a student that has a special accommodation request um, that they need time and a half or double amount of time per quiz attempt, the moderate the quiz function can help you do that and you don't have to build a separate quiz. So I'm going to switch over to my student account and I'm going to come to quizzes and we'll see sample quiz one. It's available now and the time limit, I want to draw your attention here, 15 minutes. Okay, And this quiz is locked until April 17th. So I'm going to change all of that stuff right now. I'm going to go back to Chrome. I'm going to change these quiz details so the student can take it now. So if this student were to take the quiz right now, they have 15 minutes. Okay, But I'm going to moderate the quiz because this student has an accommodation request where he's got, he will receive time and a half per quiz attempt. So the way to give this individual student additional time is I click again from the quiz details. Rather than edit, I'm going to click on moderate this quiz. I click on moderate this quiz and I find the student, so in this case Herbert Test 03, and I click on this pencil to the far right. And here I get an option for extra attempts or extra time on every attempt. I'm going to give him extra time on every attempt. Now Canvas can only do this in full minute increments. So half of 15 is seven and a half minutes, but I can't do seven and a half minutes. So I'm going to round up and I'm going to type eight whole minutes. I'm going to click save. Once I click save, I get this message here that Herbert Test gets eight extra minutes on each attempt. So switching browsers, I'm going to reload this previously loaded quiz for Herbert Test 03. And now the time limit is 23 minutes instead of 15. You'll note that on the quiz instructions, it still says 15 minutes because it's not the quiz instructions that get changed, it's the actual time per student that gets changed. So it's a very important distinction and um, don't 
get confused. So now when I click take this quiz, I'm going to go all the way down. The, again, the quiz instructions have not changed, but when I go all the way down to the bottom and look at the timer, it is counting down from 23 minutes rather than from 15 minutes. So that's how we know it's working. So now I'm just going to go through this. Cool, violets are blue. The sun is a hot ball of gas. True. And then this is a essay question, and I'm just going to type in things. When I scroll down and submit the quiz, here is the quiz attempt, and it's been recorded. And now when I come back to my teacher screen, I see that the quiz has for the most part, it looks the same, 15 minutes, 15 minutes. And that's how we would moderate the quiz for one individual that needs extra time. Now, there's a related item uh, that has to do with time, and that's what to do if a student is not able to participate in an assignment or a quiz during the time that you've created for that item. So moderate quiz can only work per quiz attempt for only for quizzes because you may have time specifically associated per quiz. Again, right here, this quiz was built with a time limit of 15 minutes. Assignments do not have this sort of, you have 15 minutes to do this assignment, at least not in Canvas. So um, you cannot moderate assignments. But I'm gonna come back here to assignments. And here, this sample assignment one, you'll notice it says it is closed. It had a due date of April 10th, 1159 p.m. So it was open the third and it closed this past Sunday at midnight. And when I switch over to my student account here, it appears as a past assignment and it is closed. When I click on these details, I cannot submit an assignment for this because it is closed. Now let's say the student come back and today says, well, you know what, professor, I couldn't do it because um, I had to move, uh, had some difficulties with everything happening surrounding this virus, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, whatever their reason may be. And they convince you and you're gonna give them another opportunity to submit this assignment. Uh, again, that is different from moderation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a separate window for that student to submit the assignment. So I'm going to click on edit details for this assignment. And the assignment is going to remain the same. All of this information will remain the same. But I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom and down here to the assign portion of the assignment. Assign, assignment, then. That could be uh, very confusing. Um, but here, I'm going to click on this plus add. Okay, and I want you to pay special attention here to where it says assign to everyone. So I'm going to click plus add. Again, it still says everyone has this time. But as soon as I select Herbert Test 03, this is going to switch to everyone else. And now... Herbert Test 03 will get a carved out time. Now I've spoken with Herbert Test 03 and I'm gonna tell him, okay, well, you know what? It's already past the due date. You're contacting me after the fact. I'm gonna give you today until two o'clock to submit the assignment. You have approximately four, three and a half hours to get it done. So now I'm gonna click save. Again, everyone else their window has passed. They cannot submit or change anything. Herbert Test 03 is getting that, that window changed. So actually, lock date cannot be before today. Oops. These dates, these times didn't match, so I needed to just make them match. So, okay, so now, it says that the due date was April 10th for everyone else, but Herbert Test 03, one student, can now do it on April 14th. So I'm going to switch browsers. I'm going to reload the, the assignment. I'm like, okay, Herbert, go and do the assignment. And now 
the submit assignment button appears and it will only be open for Herbert Test 03. So now I could go in here and I could submit the assignment. Now Herbert Test 03 was able to submit the assignment and I see that there is one submission for this assignment. So that's how you open up the window of participation or the window of opportunity for an, and you can do this for an assignment or a quiz. Um, and you could, for the moderation, um, that can only be done for quizzes. So I'm going to create a brand new quiz now, okay, because one thing with moderating a quiz is the quiz has to be published. So right now, I'm going to hypothetically create, I will be creating quiz number two, and it's going to have a hypothetical due date of next week. So it's in my syllabus, and I've told my students, hey, there's going to be a quiz next week. Uh, I'm going to call this sample quiz two. You will have 10 minutes. I'll leave all these defaults time limit I'm going to set to 10 minutes and then for the due date I'm going to make this due next Friday it's next week's quiz I'm going to make it available starting next Monday and I'll give them through the week to do it okay so I'm going to click save right and the reason I'm clicking save is because I want to show you that this quiz is not published and I don't have the moderate quiz option here okay one more thing I want to show you I'm gonna switch over to the student view and it's not published yet so the student cannot see it so I'm gonna go back and I'm going to publish the quiz now that the quiz is published I have this moderate this quiz option okay but I'm going to switch over now back to the student view and here's sample quiz 2 and note it says not available until April 20th next week. The student cannot participate in it, the student cannot see the time description and again the time limit is 10 minutes. So now switching back to the teacher I'm going to click moderate this quiz to give Herbert time and a half because he requires an accommodation so he'll get an extra five minutes that's half the time and more importantly let's say Herbert has said well you know what I'm still having issues regarding my housing situation I don't know when I'll have uh, I don't know if I'll be able to take the quiz this week because I don't know where I'm gonna be right now I'm at my uncle's house there's internet there is there any way I could take the quiz today so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna edit this once again and I'm going to give Herbert Test 03 a time to do it today. So I'll say, all right, you've got until 1.59 p.m., 2 o'clock today. Oh, and I got a message that my internet connection is unstable. So... Uh, I'm just going to repeat what I did. I'm going to open up the quiz for Herbert Test 03 to take it today because he said he's got uh, he's got internet today. He doesn't know if he'll have internet next week. So I'm clicking save. And you'll remember that when I was in the student uh, Canvas account, the time limit was set to 10 minutes. We moderated it to give them time and a half. And then we also opened it up so they could take it starting today. So now the time limit is 15 minutes. And since I've changed it, I could take the quiz starting today. And in fact, he better take it today because he's only got until 2 o'clock this afternoon to do it. So, um, yeah, if I click take the quiz, I didn't build any questions, but there's the thing. The timer's counting down for 15. So that's how moderating quizzes and giving the different time works. Again, moderating quizzes giving individual giving individuals or more than one individual additional time per quiz attempt can only be done on a quiz and it has to be done when a quiz is published um, opening it up for different 
for a different uh, participation time or window of opportunity, that could be done for either a quiz or an assignment, and that could be configured at any moment whether the assignment is published or not. However, once the in order for them to participate, even after you've changed those dates, you'll notice here it says multiple due dates, multiple due dates, multiple due dates, multiple due dates. Uh, the assignment still has to be published for those individuals to be able to participate in it. So now the next thing I'm going to show you is turn it in. Uh, now a brief uh, kind of precursor to turn it in. That is the tool that we use to check for originality in a submitted work from students. Um, it could re review and assess like Word documents and PDF documents, and it uses a proprietary algorithm. It is a third-party tool. We do not have, uh, it, it works by aggregating all of the submissions that are done to Turnitin, and it creates a massive database, and then their algorithm will check any future submitted works against other items that already exist in their database. Um, it will also index uh, the internet, uh, periodicals, newspapers and publications, and journals. So once when a student submits a work into an assignment that is using Turnitin, uh, that submission will go into Canvas, and then from Canvas it'll communicate with Turnitin, and Turnitin will process it and do its algorithm and spit out a report. That report is called an originality uh, similarity score, and it's comparing the, what the student submitted to what already exists in its database. Um, what you do with that similarity score and that report is entirely up to you. You are the teacher, and it is up to you to decide um, what the ramifications of that similarity score will be. Um, if it comes back relatively high, it is an indicator that it is something that has been found elsewhere in Turnitin's database. Um, so if you get something that's really high off the charts and you come and ask me, Herbert, I got somebody that got 80 something percent, you know, did they cheat? Or if you ask anyone in my office, uh, we cannot, we do not make that determination. That's something that you have to do as the teacher. Turnitin is a tool and it's up to you as to how you will use that tool. And um, the advice we will give you is to just review the CSUN uh, academic dishonesty page so um, yeah this this is what we'll uh, tell you because we're not the teachers you are so with all that being said let's go ahead and build an assignment that uses Turnitin so I'm going to create an assignment, and I'm going to call this sample turn it in. Uh, please write, and mind you, I'm calling it sample turn it in because I'm, you know, that's what I'm demonstrating. Um, you don't need to put turn it in in the name of your assignments. You could just call them whatever, you know, midterm, final, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Please write uh, two to three pages on dot 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 scroll down below i'm going to make this a high stakes assignment worth 100 points it's going to be an online submission i'm only going to submit i'm only going to accept word documents or pdf because that's what um turn it in can review and in order to have turn it in on this assignment from this option here plagiarism review i click on the drop down and here i see turn it in so i pick turn it in once I select it, then it'll open up, uh, give me a couple of options. And here, store submissions in standard paper repository. That's the repository that I mentioned, the database of papers that Turnitin gathers. And then there's the secondary option, do not store the submitted paper. So that, how you determine where you want it to go, I'll leave it to you, but I'm gonna leave this as the default. And then here, as I mentioned, it will compare the submission against these following items. You could toggle these on or off. Up, up to you and then for this similarity report I'm not gonna in it check any of these options the defaults tend to work pretty well 
but um, you could find something that, you know, you can play with these settings as you wish. Defaults tend to work pretty well. So then this last option under the turn it in is show report to students. You have the option to never show it to them, to show it to them immediately after the assignment is graded or after the due date. So I'm going to just leave it to the default, which is immediately. And this is not a group assignment and it does not require peer reviews. I'm going to set the due date to uh, this Friday, available starting today, and et cetera, et cetera. I'll give them an opportunity to turn it in late. So I'm, now I'm just going to click Save and Publish. So my assignment's ready to go. It's saved, it's published, sample turn it in. And now I'm going to switch over to my student account. I'm going to click on assignments. And here is my sample turn it in. I'm going to click submit assignment. And for the most part, it's going to look identical to any other Canvas submission. And here I'm going to click on the file. And before I click Submit, I have to accept the end user license agreement. And it's this little blurb here. This assignment submission is my own original work. So I check that. Now a word, I'm going to click Submit Assignment. But my, this sample submission, it's literally, uh, it's a PDF of a Wikipedia article on CSUN. So this H. Serrano CSUN wiki sample, um, when it goes over to Turnitin, it's going to come back with a very, very high similarity report because it is, it's basically a Wikipedia, it is the Wikipedia article on CSUN. So now I'm going to come back to Chrome. I'm at the browser where I'm doing all the teacher stuff. And here we see zero of one submissions graded. Now, um, depending on internet traffic and how many individuals are using Canvas and Turnitin, uh, the review process sometimes can take a couple seconds or it could take much longer. Um, here we see that it's still processing this little clock here. This is the indicator that Turnitin is doing its work. It's processing it. Uh, let me reload. Maybe it is done. Okay. So turn it in. Finally finished processing it. And here is our sample turn it in assignment. And actually, I need to share my screen. Okay. So can uh, turn it in. Finally finished processing the submission we just did. Um, it did take it a lot longer than usual. It took it about four minutes. Normally it takes a couple of seconds, but again, different factors will, will uh, determine how long it actually takes. And this big red flag here, that's the similarity score. Red is not, um, you know, it just means that it has a high similarity score. So I'm going to come back here and this is 100%. This paper, 100% of it has already been submitted to turn it in. So now I'm going to click on it. And we're taken over to the turn it in side of it. And here's the paper again. We see the whole thing is highlighted with this like pinkish color. And when I click here on the 100, this will bring up the match overview. So 100% of this paper exists somewhere. And when I click on this bar chart below, it shows all sources. And here we see where this has existed previously or where it has been pulled up from the Turnitin site. So this has been already submitted to CSU Northridge. That's because I submitted it. I've used this paper before in this demonstration. Um, also, when I do other testing, I've used this paper. It's one of like six that I have. So they're, they're all showing up through the roof. Um, but down below, we get to see where else it's appearing. So 64% of this is appearing on the Wikipedia page. Then it's coming from schools, first hour, etc, etc, etc. The library uses parts of this. So all, you know, it, it, it gets very granular 
And depending on what is submitted and how it's submitted, that will determine uh, this score. And again, as I stated uh, before I got into the Turnitin information, this is merely a tool. Um, I always like to give an example. Last semester, I had one professor who used Turnitin. She had created completely new prompts. And then the professor, um, when they were going through the submissions, there was a student that had a relatively high similarity score in like the 80s or something. And this, the, the faculty member just couldn't believe it. They were, they were actually upset and they thought that the tool was broken. And so I helped them. I looked through it. Again, not saying any, you know, that there was any malintent. Um, but when I went through it with the with this faculty member, it turns out that the student had self-plagiarized themselves. So looking when uh, we were both looking at this similarity score, uh, some of the items had just not been cited properly, but about 60% of the paper showed up like this, submitted to CSU Northridge, and then going into the details of it, like it showed where it had been submitted. And yeah, it turns out that the there was someone else. <laughs> you see, when I clicked on the text only report, it shows this is a 100% match from student papers from that were already previously submitted on this specific day. So it gets a lot of information. And yeah, it just turns out that this one faculty member had created a brand new prompt. It was a completely original prompt for her course. That is true. But the prompt itself was similar to another course that the student had taken. So wow. both were like sociology or one was a sociology course and one was mm -hmm. like uh, gender and women's studies or something. I don't remember the exact details, but they were both social sciences. And there, yeah, there was just enough room where the student just re you know, they repurposed a majority of a previously submitted paper for a different course at CSUN. And um, yeah, the, the, yeah, the, the professor was pretty disappointed um, as one would imagine, because they had created a brand new prompt and then this student did this. So turn it in, Again, it only identifies the similarity, right? It doesn't say this person is cheating, this person is acting in bad faith, this person is plagiarizing. It's just giving a report and it's just spitting out the uh, objective facts that it has. Um, so, yeah, if you get something like this and you're asking us, we could help you interpret this, this aspect, the you know, what does 100% mean? We could tell you that black or white, but we cannot tell you what the intent was. That's not our, that's not what we do. We could help you with the technical aspects, but not with the subjective or any further. Um, we don't make judgments whether someone cheated or not. It was just, you know, we'll refer you here to academic dishonesty. And I think there's another resource uh, available. And let me, so before I end, I'm going to go here to turn it in the colors. So right now, this one came up as red. It was 100%. It's red. Uh, so on this page here, there is a scale on what those little flags mean. So blue is no matching text. Green, one word or up to 24% of that submission. Yellow is 25 to 49%, orange is 50 to 74, and red is 75 to 100%. Again, these are all objective values. It's merely comparing it against the massive data set, and then how you interpret those results, that is up to you. So I'm going to stop my screen share. Oh, actually, the one last thing I'm gonna show you is what the student sees. So now that this has been processed, since we did enable the students to see the report immediately, you know, we didn't grade the submission, but the students, they see that red flag and then they get taken to turn it in as the student and it shows up there. So if you do use this tool, you 
make your own determination whether you want the students to see the report or not. Uh, it's entirely up to you.